Now there's been a lot of commotion made recently about the release of this bad boy, the TaylorMade M6. Alongside the TaylorMade M5, TaylorMade are claiming this is the longest driver ever, and before they put the resin in the face, where the little orange dots are, it was illegal. So how much better is it than last year's TaylorMade M4, which was a fantastic driver? Let's find out, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. If you're new to the channel and this is your very first time watching my content, first of all, welcome. I'm pleased to have you here. And second of all, make sure you consider hitting that subscribe button. On this channel, I bring you guys daily golf-related content that helps you raise your game, lower your handicap, and basically just enjoy your golf a little bit more. In today's video, I have the TaylorMade M6 against last year's TaylorMade M4. TaylorMade are claiming that everybody gets faster this year. Everyone gets more ball speed because of the speed injection in the face or the speed reduction, however you want to look at it. Now for me, the TaylorMade M4 was a fantastic golf club last year. It was a great club. It flew off the shelves. It suited a lot of people. The M3 was a little bit different. The M3 with the adjustability and the higher price tag, a lot of people stayed away from. But the M4, similar to the M2, was a fantastic driver. So how's this going to compare? Are we going to get more ball speed? Is the inertia generator going to show any more forgiveness? If you do want to see a full review on the TaylorMade M6, I have already done that. That is on the channel and I will link it above there now for you to go and watch. But today we are purely comparing this year versus last year M4 versus M6. Now what's different in the technology you ask? Yes, we have the speed injection in the face. Both clubs have twist face, so twist face stays, which was gonna be a big story. You could never really see TaylorMade just doing away with twist face, could you? Because that would kind of go against everything they were screaming and shouting about last year. We also have the inertia generator in the M6. What that is designed to do is push weight back and low to increase MOI and make it more forgiving on off center hits. Now something which has gone under the radar with these clubs is Hammerhead 2.0 technology. Now, now, the M4 has hammerhead technology, the little slit that you can see in the front of the face. The M6 now has hammerhead 2.0. Now, how much difference is in there? I really don't, yeah, don't, don't know. But what Taylor made a claim in is that it's more responsive, it's more flexible, and it is again going to help towards more ball speed, which is why we have these little speed ports in the face. This is where Taylor made have injected resin into the face to slow the face down because initially it was illegal, it was too fast. You know what? I think we've done enough talking, do you? Let's hit some golf balls. I'm going to hit all Titleist Pro V1Xs. I'm going to make it a fair test. I'm going to use the same shaft in both these clubs to make it an ultra fair test, the Atmos stiff shaft, and have them both set to nine and a half degrees. Let's hit some golf balls. So guys, I'm going to start with last year's TaylorMade M4 and straight away looking down at it, isn't it amazing how things can sort of look outdated straight away? I always think of new cars. When new cars come out, the previous one all of a sudden looks old. Not saying the M4 doesn't look good because it still looks stunning, but it just looks a little bit more dated. I'm going to hit a ton of golf shots here, guys. I usually only hit a handful, but I really want to get a fair test, so bear with me. This thing still packs a punch. Not that it wouldn't do because it's not degraded, has it? So remember guys, hit those comments below. Who is using a TaylorMade M4? And would you consider swapping up to the M6? One thing's for sure, the M4 sounds incredible. Bring the averages down. See, that's the one you hit off the first tee when you're not loose. Or if you're just rubbish. <laughs> oh. Oh. And then that's the provisional. 
Right guys, I'm gonna hit a couple more, then we'll upgrade to the M6 and see how that does. Now, the real interesting point here is that every bad shot I've hit has come out the toe and it's lost a ton of speed and lost a ton of distance. So, is the speed injection in the M6 gonna help me there? Hopefully I'm hitting enough shots to prove that either it does or it doesn't. Oh. Bullet! Okay, last shot with the M4. Let's see if we can absolutely button one. No. Okay guys, that is 10 shots hit with the TaylorMade M4. We're gonna go through all the numbers at the end and I'm gonna keep you waiting. Let's see what the M6 has to offer. I'm gonna put exactly the same shaft in it. I'm gonna put the Atmos stiff shaft in the M6. I'm gonna set it on the same loft. I'm gonna do similar to what I did with the M4. I'm gonna ease my way into it. I'm gonna try and hit some fairways. Then I'm gonna go after some in the last three or four shots. Cause, cause that's what testing drivers all about, isn't it? Let's do it. So guys, speed injection in the face, much lighter carbon head, Hammerhead 2.0 technology, and an inertia generator in the back. But does it make a difference, you ask? Let's find out. So I'm gonna hit 10 shots again with this, immediately looking down at it. I don't know if it's because it's newer, but it does for me, I, I like the color scheme a bit more. I love the blood orange, I love the, I love the matte weave on the top rather than the shiny one. I think in the sun that's gonna be more beneficial as well. Also, I really like how the top line's thinner, so that silver proportion has moved way forward to the face. That suits my eye a little bit more. Some people are gonna prefer the M4 looks. Absolutely understand that. So let's hit some fairway finders to start with. Nice and straight. Not sure about the distance though. Guys, are there any drivers you want me to do this with as well? Comment below. Oh. <laughs> Stop it. Oh. Wow. Yes, please. I think Wayne Riley had described that one as frozen rope. Yeah, I'll never do that again. So pretty much halfway through the M6 test, it doesn't really feel any different. It sounds a little bit deeper. It sounds more of a thud. In fairness, I think I preferred the sound of the M4. We are in a studio though, so that makes a difference. I think that's as good a swing as I've got. Really do. So I'm just starting to find my rhythm now with the M6, and I must say, it's feeling pretty good. But then so did the M4. Let's hit three more shots, and then we're gonna look at what we all wanna see. What's the difference? That's high right. I think it's fair to say this test is pretty much as fair as it could be. I've hit some absolute stinkers. And a few bombs with each as well. Just like the last one with the M4, let's see if we can launch one out there. Oh, stop. Okay guys, that's 10 shots hit with each. I really need to get fitter, that's what I'm taking from this test anyway, but which driver performs best? The brand new, all singing, all dancing, speed injected, inertia generating, Hammerhead 2.0 M6, that took a few takes, or the TaylorMade M4? Let's find out. So guys, I can honestly say, I've not looked at these numbers yet, I've literally just brought the camera over to the computer. Let's take a look at dispersion first. This is the dispersion with the M6. Again, a couple of bad shots, a couple of good shots. The high right ones didn't seem as much of an issue with the M6, but I had a couple of these with both, didn't I? That horrible low hook. What about the dispersion with the M4? Hmm. K 
case of the lefts going on with the M4, but that's the beauty of human testing. Let's take a look at what we've all come to see. So first off we've got the numbers for the M4, looking at distance wise, you can see how I did kind of start off patting them a little bit and then uh, really got into it a little bit at the end and actually when I tried to get into it more the distance suffered which we all know happens don't we. Average 272, which is a number I've been seeing a lot this week actually. Average spin 26, pretty good. That could be a little bit lower but you know what, that is not a bad number at all. There were some real high spin, bad swings in there, but that's golf. I'm not going to take any of these out. If you want to look up, if you want to look up all the spin numbers, a couple of nice low ones, a couple of high ones in three. Look at that one. That's smashing the average up, isn't it? And I bet that that was the lowest. That was the real terrible strike. What about ball speed? Ball speed is what Taylor made a claim in. Everyone gets faster. Average ball speed 159 with the M4. So that's fairly low compared to what I've been testing this week. I've been doing a lot of testing this week. Let's change over to the M6. Now looking at the distances again, started fairly slow, picked up a little bit, went through a real nice streak from shots five to nine there. Average distance, 279. So I've gained a solemn seven yards there. And I'm gonna be honest guys, this test is as honest and as fair as I could possibly have done it. I've even used exactly the same ball 20 times there for you. Let's have a look at the spin rates. Again, a couple of high ones, a couple of low ones. I'm not a machine, but much more consistent there actually with the M6. Average spin, 2,400, so quite a lot lower. That's more in the ballpark where I would want it. I mean, to be fair, neither of those spin rates were bad, were they? What about ball speed? Does everyone get more ball speed, which is what Taylor made a claim in? Average ball speed 159.9 and the average ball speed on the M4 was 159.0. So I have gained seven yards from the M4 to the all singing, all dancing M6 and 0 0.9 miles an hour ball speed. So we'll call that one mile an hour ball speed to save clutching at straws. Now, if you're gaming the TaylorMade M4 and you're thinking, should I be upgrading to the TaylorMade M6 purely for more ball speed, everyone gets more speed, which is what TaylorMade are claiming. Have I gained more speed? I've got to say yes, haven't I? Because it's, it, the facts are I've gained 0 0.9 miles an hour ball speed. Is that why I've gained more distance? Because to be fair, seven yards over 10 shots is a pretty good return, isn't it? And in fairness, guys, I can't stress this enough. This test has been as fair as I could possibly make it. But the reason why I've hit the M6 further than the M4 is better launch angles and better spin rates. So it kind of gets me wondering, why did TaylorMade feel like they have to push all this marketing of everyone gets faster and everyone gets more speed? I understand faster is a buzzword, isn't it? Faster, speed, distance, all buzzwords. Now, why not just do loads of testing and show the numbers like I have there? But I suppose that's what we're here for anyway. So, I mean, in fairness, guys, as a roundup, what I would have to say is, is the M6 better than the M4? For me, with the same shaft in it, yes. It was seven yards different. On a different day, I might have different results. I, it's human testing, it's not machine testing. I assume that's why you guys like to watch. Could I game either of these drivers? Yes, absolutely could, yes, because seven yards, depending on the bounce outside and the wind and, and all the rest, I don't think you'd notice a massive difference out on the course. Comment below, would you like to see me continue this test and take them out on the golf course? That might well be something interesting that you guys want to see. And what else do you want to see, guys? What else do you want to see me compare? I've got loads of content coming for you in the next few weeks, so be a part of it and comment below and let me know. Apart from that, guys, if you've enjoyed what you've seen and you'd like me to help you personally with your game, make sure you go check out my website, www.jamesrobinsongolf.com. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Put the thumbs up, and I'll see you soon.